One of these topics is the topic of perished nations, is the topic of nations that were given the message and yet they turned their backs. The people of Hud, and their name was Ad. And the specific Qabila, the specific like family tribe that Hud السلام, was sent to, they were called Iram. Their location was a location called Al Ahqaf, between the sandy hills, windy and sandy hills, and it was between Yemen and between Oman. They were the first people to worship idols after the destruction of the people of Nuh. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the people of Ad that they were extremely, extremely powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Fajr, haven't you seen what Allah did to the people of Ad? They had no one in comparison to their power. Dear brothers and sisters, what type of power did Ad have? Nothing like them was created in the land. They had bodies that were huge and powerful. They had wealth that was so enormous. They had so much luxury. So not only did they have the money, they had the offspring and the families to, uh, to build that wealth. And they had the livestock and they had the agriculture and they had the gardens and they had the rivers that flowed through those gardens. They had luxury to the highest level. So much so that they used to build buildings and they would never live in them. They would find a huge mountain and they would just build something up there, a huge castle. Someone would pass by and they would say, who built this castle? Who lives there? Nobody lives there, but it belongs to Ad. There's another castle there up on the mountains, huge and mighty. Who lives there? Nobody lives there. Who built it? Ad built it. And so they would just build this, just playing games. Their excess wealth, they would just build this. And political power, nobody could stop them. They would go anywhere and any law that they said was the law. Because of their power, because of their physical power, because of their political power. So much so that Ad said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records their statement, who is more stronger than we are? The most powerful nation. Who is more powerful than us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't they see that Allah, the one who created them, has more power than them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, travel in the land, so look and see how was the final end of those who came before them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the people of Ad. Hud alayhi salam was from their tribe. Hud alayhi salam, we can then understand that Hud alayhi salam had a strong, enormous body alayhi salam and was very handsome. He was from them speaking in their tongue. These people, as we said, they worshipped idols and they specifically Worship three idols. The names of the idols were Suda, Samud, and Hara. Hud السلام, was then giving this message to the people of, of Ad. Worship your Lord, you have no God except Him. It doesn't mean that Hud السلام, spoke to them once, he gave them a lecture, there was some public gathering, he spoke to them once and they disbelieved. That means that the messenger spoke to them again and again and again and again. And so these people, they disbelieved. That Ad disbelieved in the messengers. Now notice, how many prophets did they disbelieve in? How many prophets? All of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they disbelieved in Hud alayhi salam, but because they disbelieved in one of the messengers, all the messengers have come with the same message. 
And so they disbelieved in all of them. That's number one. The people of Ad were extremely skillful and they were extremely intelligent, except when it came to matters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when you see nations, where do you visit? Most of these locations that you are visiting are nations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and as for Ad and Thamud, and clearly will appear to you from the traces of their buildings, their fate. What happened to them? The shaitan beautified for them their sins. And so they were blocked from the straight path that they indeed were still, even though they were gifted with intelligence and skill. Shaitan still misguided them. That that intelligence and skill is not enough. The person has to go deeper to their heart to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Ad claimed to be the greatest nation on earth, the strongest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and as for Ad, they behaved arrogantly. And you want to underline that. What does being arrogant mean? It's when a person thinks that there is no strength above their strength. When they claim that any type of knowledge that they have is from themselves. Or they claim that any type of organization or civilization is something that they gave birth to. And so anytime a person attributes that intelligence and skill to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they've become arrogant. They said, Man ashaddu minna quwa, who is stronger than us in power? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Awalam yarao, don't they see the one who created them, Allah who created them, that He is more powerful than them and more superior than them. You will see in their arrogance to Hud alayhi salam, they wanted a sign that if you're telling the, uh, the truth, then bring us a sign. This is what the nations did. They're asking in arrogance. And what will happen when the sign comes to them? The people of Ad, you know what their sign was that they wanted? They said, bring us what you're promising us, i.e. the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're telling the truth. And then we'll believe. Why did they say that? It's in mockery, out of arrogance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the issue of mocking and ridiculing and comedy, making fun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladina ajramu. The criminals, those who are criminals, their disbelief led them to be criminals like this. Kanu min ladina amanu yadhakun. They used to, kanu in the past, they used to laugh at those who have believed. Laughing and making fun of the deen is a sign of nifaq and it could lead a person to kufr. They said to Hud alayhi salam, you haven't brought us any proof. He said that all these idols, you made them yourselves. Everything that you're bringing, you just made it up. Whenever they get to the point with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can't argue anymore, they resort to violence. <laughs> They wanted to imprison them. They wanted to detain them. They wanted to expel them. They wanted to do this to the messengers. And Hud is saying, he said, I bring Allah to testify. And I, and, and I testify, right? I have nothing to do from that which you associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the lessons there you learn that a person is clearly distinguishing themselves from what is worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the believer following the footsteps of these messengers is stepping back and testifying. Everybody knows that we do not believe in this. And then Hud alayhi salam said, he said, all of you, how powerful was Ad? And he said, all of you fight me now. Destroy me if you can. And they couldn't destroy him. They couldn't do anything to him. And he said, I've placed my trust in Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Ad, they asked for the punishment to be brought to them. The first of the punishment was that a drought was sent to them. This drought, it lasted for three years. And when there is no water, bring me the biggest nation. And if there is no water, what will happen to them? There is no water to drink because there was no water for the livestock. And the land will dry up and the people will die. And so this is what happened to the people of Ad. 
For three years, there was a drought that befell them. And so they said, who's stronger than us in power? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the water away from them. The people of Ad, whenever something like this would happen, they would go out and they would pray to the idols. They took out 70 men and they went to pray to the idols. And they had like their Amir and they're calling to the idols, calling for rain. And it is said, and this is in the history books, that three clouds were appeared to them. The clouds, as they were praying to the idols, it was said to them, a red cloud, yellow cloud, and a black cloud. And it said, which of these clouds do you want? And the Amir of them said, we want the black cloud. Because the black clouds carry the most rain. And so they chose the black cloud. It was a wind. Once the people came back, initially, when they saw the rain clouds, they said, like the, the rain clouds, they're going to bring rain to us. They saw the weather. And they said they rejoiced that now the rain is finally, they were in a drought for all these years. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, rather it is that which you were trying to hasten. What were they trying to hasten? The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can hasten it. It has its time. Allah, yes, you will be destroyed, but you still got some time. And now, initially they thought that it was going to bring rain. And they say that there was a woman amongst the people of Ad who felt something different. And she said, this isn't a rain cloud. The wind started picking up and started to scream. And it became violent. And even though the people of Ad were enormous and large and built very well fortified places, if anybody just stood up, the wind would snatch them. Now when you see a tornado, a tornado, and we're not saying that this is a tornado, but when you see a tornado, how long does a tornado last? Only a few minutes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this wind, that was sent to the people of Ad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the wind for seven nights and eight days. Probably just in a few minutes they'd be destroyed. Seven nights and eight days. Allah destroyed everything. He wiped them from the earth. They were like a tree that had been chopped down. It was said that they would be lifted up and they would be smashed down on their heads and all their limbs would be out like roots like that. They were all destroyed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is there any remnants of them? When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he would see a dark cloud coming to Medina, the dark clouds bring with it rain. And so for people who live in the desert, this is a time of happiness. <clears throat> and so the Prophet ﷺ would be extremely afraid. And he would go back and forth and she would see the fear on the face of the Prophet ﷺ. And Aisha radiallahu anha, when it would start to rain, the Prophet ﷺ would calm down. He said, oh Aisha, it may be as the people of Ad that when they saw the dark clouds coming to them, they said, these are clouds that are going to bring us rainfall. But rather, it was the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The storms come when there is imbalance on the earth and they stop when the justice is restored. In conclusion, inshallah ta'ala, a dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whenever you see these rain clouds coming you should say as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allahumma inni as'aluka khayraha wa khayra ma fiha wa khayra ma ursilat bih وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّهَا وَشَرِّ مَا فِيهَا وَشَرِّ مَا أُرْسِلَتْ بِهِ O oh Allah, I ask you the khair, the goodness of these cl clouds and the goodness that is in, in it and the goodness that it was sent for. And I seek your protection, O oh Allah, from its, the evil of these clouds and the evil that's in it and the evil that it may have been sent for. This is the last point. Allah Azza wa says, this was a nation. Laha ma kasabat. Where is Ad right now? They have gone to what they have attained. And you will go and you will journey on 
to what you are accumulating now. You are planting seeds. Here today you have planted a seed. Coming to this lecture and spending the time, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for that. You're planting seeds. Tomorrow you will be planting more seeds. And you will journey to the fruits of these seeds and what comes from them. And Allah Azza wa Jal will never ask you on the day of resurrection about the people of Ad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about yourself. And so you turn to Allah Azza wa Jal in thankfulness and humility. The people of Ad were not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so let you be thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal. The people of Ad were arrogant to Allah Azza wa Jal, so Allah disgraced them. Let you and myself, all of us, be humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had so many luxuries, yet they didn't spend from that. And so if it's not going to be them, then let it be you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about himself. And he said, وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ أَضْحَكَ وَأَبْكَ وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ مَاتَ وَأَحْيَا And then the verses continue. وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ رَبُّ الشِّعْرَى And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنَّهُ أَهْلَكَ عَادٍ الْأُولَى And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who destroyed عَادٍ الْأُولَى The first عَاد So that you understand how big and enormous and powerful they are and you will get a little glimpse of how powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.